high blood clot count. Today's topic is about antibody screen. An antibody screen is an important test in donor and patient testing, as well as in blood product selection process for transfusion. It is among one of the most frequent test orders in blood bank. Today's video, I will include what is antibody, step by step on how to perform antibody screens using gel methodology, which will also include a grading scale and troubleshooting. Without further ado, let us get into it. Before we go into more detail on how antibody screen tests are performed, let us define what is antibody. An antibody is a protein structure that our body produces to detect a foreign antigen. Once the antibody detects a non-self antigen, the body then initiates an immune system response. An antibody is something our bodies produce against non-self antigen, while an antigen is protein structure on the cell surface. This is how I remember it. Antibody is something our body produces. Antibody, bodies produce. We have a couple of naturally occurring antibodies, such as anti-A and anti-B antibodies. The non-naturally occurring antibodies are referred to as unexpected red blood cells antibodies or allo antibodies. We also have something called auto antibodies, but that's not what we're going to be covering today. What is an antibody screen? Antibody screen is the name of the test in blood bank that aims to detect the presence of antibodies in patients or donor plasma. In blood bank, antibody screen tests are used to detect unexpected blood group antigen. There are few ways that our body can be synthesized to foreign RBC antigen, such as from pregnancy, transfusion, transplant, sharing needle, or injections of immunogenic material. What are the testing methods available for antibody screen tests? Two methods have been the golden standard for decades before more sensitive methods are developed. Other methods are gel column agglutination and solid phase technology. In general, solid phase is the most sensitive method followed by gel and tube. Even though solid phase is the most sensitive method so far, other methods has their own benefits in the antibody identification process. We are focusing on gel method today. If you want to know about other methods in detail, please let me know. When and why do we perform antibody screen tests? We already know that CLS performs antibody screens on all donors and patients who are expecting to be transfused. This is done to help in appropriate blood product selection process for the patient. Let's start with antibody screen on the donor. We perform antibody screen on the donor because we want to make sure that the product is safe for the patient. If the antibody screen is negative, red blood cells, plasma, and plasma products can be used for transfusion, given that they are compatible with the recipients and negative for all the other donor screening tests. Check out the link below if you want to know more about the donor screening. Now, if the donor antibody screen is positive, what do we do? Is it even safe to use blood products from that donation to transfuse? The RBC can be used because the antibody is in the donor plasma. However, things are a bit different for the plasma. If there is an antibody present in the donor plasma, there won't be any plasma or plasma products derived from that unit for transfusion purposes. However, the plasma is still a good source for antibody reagent. Note, some donation centers won't even use RBC from the donor if that donor has more than two antibodies present. For patients, antibody screen test results help when selecting red blood cell for transfusion. A positive antibody screen means that the patient has antibody against a specific antigen. So, a chosen unit should not have an antigen that the patient has an antibody for. If a donor RBC has antigen that the patient has an antibody for, the patient may experience hemolytic transfusion reaction. Physicians usually order antibody screen tests on the patients who transfusions may be a part of the patient care, such as pregnancy, accident, or preoperative patient. We talked about why and when already. 
Now, I will talk about how do we do antibody screen test, antibody screen procedure, gel methodology. In short, in this test, the reagent red blood cells suspended in hypotonic buffer saline solutions are combined with patient plasma or serum to allow antigen and antibody to interact in the upper chamber of the microtube. This results in promoting antibody uptake. The detection of antibody occurs when the sensitized RBC reacts with the anti-IgG gel during centrifugation. Specimen There is no specific preparations for the patients required prior to specimen collection, a completely clotted or EDTA anticoagulant sample drawn within three days of the testing may be used. Plasma from EDTA tube or the pink top tube is the preferred specimen because the pink top tube is the designated tube for blood bank. The serums or non-EDTA anticoagulant specimen should only be used in emergency when an EDTA sample is not available. For the gel method, we will need anti IgG card, antibody screen cells, 0.8%. Procedure Step 1. Label the card with patient ID. Remember to always use two patient identifier. Step 2. Remove file sealed from the microtubes to be used. Each card has six microtubes. We will be using three screening cells, so only remove the file for the three microtubes. Step 3. Add 50% microliter of 0.8 antibody screen cell suspensions to the labeled microtube. Be careful not to let the tip of your pipette touch the gel card or the liquid inside the gel card. Remember to change the pipette tip for each screening cell. Step 4. Add 25 microliter of plasma or serum into each microtube. Step 5. Incubate at 37 degrees for 15 minutes. Step 6. Centrifuge the gel card. Step 7. Read and record the reaction of each microtube. Result interpretation. Positive. Positive defined by hemolyse or agglutination in the gel card, which indicate the presence of an antibody. We grade the positive results from 1 to 4 plus. 1 plus mean agglutinations of RBC observed predominantly in the lower half of the gel microtube, some unagglutinated red blood cells form a button in the bottom of the microtube. 2 plus. 2 plus agglutinated red blood cells are dispersed throughout the length of the gel microtube. A few unagglutinated red blood cells may be observed in the bottoms of the microtube. 3 plus. 3 plus is when the majority of agglutinated red blood cells are trapped in the upper half of the gel microtube. 4 plus. 4 plus is when you see a solid band of RBC at the top of the gel. A few agglutinate may filter into the gel but remain at the top. Negative. You can see a well-defined button at the bottom of the microtube. No agglutinations or hemolyse of the screening cells in the gel indicate the absence of an antigen antibody reaction. All the cells move to the bottom of the microtube. Mixed fill. Mixed fill is when you have two solid bands, one at the top and one at the bottom. Please be cautious when the result is mixed fill. An additional patient transfusion history may be necessary to help resolve the problem. The mixed fill can also cause from clots, particulate, fibrin. A recap on how to create the cells. This is how I remember. Negative, solid band on the bottom. 1 plus, mostly on the bottom. 2 plus, traveling from the bottom up. 3 plus, traveling from the top down. 4 plus, solid band up top. Mixed field, 2 band, 1 up top, 1 on the bottom. There are limitations with gel methods. Here are some of the limitations. First, antibodies specific of low incidence antigens are not represented on the test cells will not be detected. Second, antibodies below the threshold level may not be detected in this test. Third, significant variations in red blood cell suspensions may result in fault positive or fault negative reaction. 
both weak reactions may be caused by high protein levels in plasma, rouleau, or other particulate matter in the plasma. Troubleshooting. First, too many or too few red blood cells results in negative reaction. This may be the result of improper preparations of red blood cell suspensions or adding incorrect quantity of red blood cells to the upper reaction chamber of the microtube. A normal red blood cells button of a negative reaction looks like this. This bottom was delivered by adding 50 microliter of 0.8% red blood cell suspensions to the gel card. Here is the negative reactions with too many red blood cells. You can see a large red blood cell button caused by adding red blood cells from an improper preparation of RBC suspensions. This one, the suspension was too thick or too heavy. If the red blood cells button is too large, weak reactions may be missed because, because the red blood cell button covered the agglutination reaction. But what about the negative reactions with too few RBC? This means the suspension was too light and it is indicated by two fields RBC at the bottom of the microtube. Now, let's talk about when there are too many or too few red blood cells in a positive reaction. This is also a direct result of improper preparations of RBC suspensions, poorly mix of the red blood cell reagents, or adding incorrect amounts of RBC. There is a positive reaction with too many red blood cells. Too many red blood cells may cause you to misinterpret it. Positive reaction with too few RBC. It may be hard to see and interpret the results when the RBC concentration is too low. Lastly, if Rulo presents in patient plasma, Rulo are aggregations of red blood cells in a stack like koi pattern. Rulo are caused by abnormally high concentrations of protein, such as in patients with multiple myeloma, which occasionally interfere with antibody screen tests. LULO can cause false positive reactions, as you can see in this example here. Additional tests are necessary to resolve this false positive reaction, such as performing an antibody screen using tube method. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.